Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. What month is it? And that's why we're doing May. We are continuing the unintended trend of anxious women worried about their future. May is an awkward girl who has a crush on the handsome Adam. Unfortunately, not everything goes your way. And her only friend is her doll, Susie. He'd make a good girlfriend for Billy the Puppet. Soon, May will start to put body parts together like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, speaking of jigsaw, our friends over at CZ's World is doing the most accurate timeline on the internet about Jigsaw from the Saw series. If you're interested in learning about the entire history and analysis of John Kramer in an awesomely edited video by Professor CZ's World himself, check it out by clicking the eye on the top right or link in the description. Nonetheless, let's get to May directed by Lucky McKee and her attempts to get her crush. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to go on. The movie begins with someone missing her whole eyeball. I guess I would react that way too. Well, I guess we should think about how it led up to that point. She had a lazy eye, one that her mother thought should be hidden, and that she should cosplay as a pirate every day to school. Captain Patch, one of the worst generation, on her way to the new world. Maybe you would have gotten some admirers if you said you were a pirate. Her parents are kind of weird, they're like base mode parents. They get this weird doll for her named Susie to be friends with, except it's a doll she can't even take out of the crate. Years pass for Captain Patch and she seems to be pretty awkward, very awkward. At least she doesn't wear the eye patch anymore. Honestly, I, I think you're really hot. I'm just keeping it a bean. <laughs> I'm just being honest. May finds a crush in some random dude making love to a car. Get someone who will caress your body just like that. I think that's the car Peter Parker fell on when he said he's back. Looks like May works at an animal hospital, one where everybody mispronounces scapples. Looks like May does get a potential hookup with a coworker by saying she has a beautiful neck. But it looks like she'd rather be with that guy molesting that car. It always feels uncomfortable being single around people who love to show other people how much tongue they can swallow. That's why I hope y'all bump teeth. Now she's been working on fixing the lazy eye, but I don't know, I think I'd rather just have blurry vision if you told me I have to put contacts in. I'm scared of contacts. May, you look like you make TikToks. You know those TikToks where, where it'd be like, you wanna date me until this, that, and that. She likes she make those head ass. Anyway, she really wants to talk to that guy and those contacts fix her lazy eye so that it gets off his ass and gets a job. <laughs> she wants to talk to that mechanic guy and look who it is. However, she doesn't have the guts to talk to him yet. Speaking of guts, I top right. <laughs> what she does have is the skills to make her own outfits. <laughs> and, oh, trust me, if he doesn't notice you now, the only thing he must be thinking about is sucking Okay, May, at this point, you should just walk right up to him and show him who he's missing out on. Much time passes and bro falls asleep. <laughs> when May notices that, she finds the prime opportunity to go observe his hands, her favorite part about him. Of course, the guy awakes when he feels skin in his palm and May escapes like mission failed. We'll get him next time. I guess that situation kind of made her go overload. So she relaxes by cutting her fingertips at work. It doesn't hurt her that much, but it's a well-known fact at this point that if there's anybody lusting over May, right now it's her coworker Polly here. Another time, May gets in a run-in with sexy hands again. They finally converse. He's feeling her too and even teaches her how to turn her lungs black. I actually like Blunt May. Seem like they about to f <coughs> Probably tonight, maybe even right here. May's energy is completely murdered when she hears he has a girlfriend though. It's like her entire heart fell, but he meant an ex-girlfriend. Heart came right back up. Looks like May has a little boyfriend now, one who tells her to practice smoking. <laughs> Imagine practicing smoking. May would probably love to watch Rare, she seems to have no issues talking about guts. Speaking of guts, 
Aye, the top right. <laughs> Again, there's another scene where they talk to each other about her insecurities about not having a boyfriend before. A lot of guys, like girls like you, May, they just chilling, eating dip. I hate when the dip get real low and you gotta dig your hand in to get some dip on the chip, but then the dip get on your hand. I hate it. Anyway, Adam later invites May to his home. He's very expressive. Looks like he has a channel talking about anything disturbing. Okay, y'all should just go ahead and have sex already. Of course, she's never kissed before, so she's all over the place. So embarrassed about it once she gets home, she actually harms her hand after taking it out on Susie the doll, since it was so embarrassing. Polly, she's hilarious. Hilarious because of how thirsty she is. Looks like Polly kissing her gave her some tips, even if Polly is positively ridiculous. Anyway, May calls Adam to see if he would like to hang out again after that kissing debacle. He didn't call her back and is genuinely nowhere to be found. So sooner or later, she just walks up to his house. She's actually standing out there for a good, a good two hours. The only good thing is that he likes weird. She makes some macaroni and cheese. I think the shell kind, those are the best for me. They sit down to watch a college film Adam made before he dropped out, Jack and Jill, a couple on a picnic. They indulge in cannibalism. Hilariously, this is reminding me of Dumplings, and Dumplings' Aunt May was riding cannibalism about how it's natural and even sexy. This is her entire philosophy right here. It was pretty cool, I ain't gonna front. If it wasn't obvious already, this is where all that leads up. This is her first time doing anything like this, so she's moving around like a baby that wants to drink from her bottle. But just out of nowhere, she just bites on his damn lip. Bit it so hard he's breathing. What? Oh, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do is breathe. Bit it so hard that he's bleeding. She intended this though. And yeah, she's one of a kind. A little too weird for Adam. He leaves in a hurry and May takes it out on dear old Susie. I told you to face the goddamn wall. He really wasn't her fault. You should have turned her around. Adam walking out like he just dodged the Kamehameha. Next day, there is some kitty surgery going on. I don't think the doctor is very qualified for this kind of thing. But later on, May goes back to Adam's house, but narrowly listens to Adam with a whole new girl. She walks away, high key, heartbroken, highest of keys. She goes back home sad about it, but then hears a message on her phone from Polly asking her to come over. Polly's been lusting after her the whole movie, so eventually, May falls for those advances, especially when he's laying the same game as Adam. Adam. To get herself busy, she offers to work with blind kids, in particular Petey here who loves to insult anyone in her path. That precedes an awkward conversation between Adam and May at the washers again. She can also tell he lied about a machine being broken just so that he didn't have to be in the same room as her. So later, she goes back to talk with Polly, but Polly was never interested in a serious relationship with her. And so May is heartbroken again seeing Polly with some random girl in the back. Even the cat she has won't pay attention to her, so she inadvertently kills it by throwing an ashtray at it. Her mind is breaking like the case Susie is in. That case breaks entirely when she brings the display to the blind kids for them to fill on. Honestly, they kind of force it to fall. It's their fault. And it has glass shattering everywhere. Blind kids and glass is a recipe gone wrong. These kids, including May, hurt themselves, ripping away at Susie and destroying her best friend and getting blood everywhere. Yeah, I think May just broke entirely. I'm scared for what she's gonna do next. She seems to get some composure back soon, attracting the attention of a worried punk guy. She's going through some kind of a raving phase right now. The dude would be kind of a cool weird dude to hang out with, but the only thing that he wants to eat is juju beans. She does like his tattoo though. I suppose it's foreshadowing. He goes to rub ice cubes on his nipples, but ends up discovering the dead cat. This is some sick shit. He verbally degrades her until she realizes she could actually end his life. And so she stabs him through his hands all the way through his head with some scissors, all while thinking of the events that led to this moment. So it's official, May the Murderer. This is starting to feel like a prequel film for a well-known villain. And she says that she needs more parts. 
While at the park reading about how to amputate human beings, Adam comes and apologizes for how things went with him. Surprisingly, I guess he actually did kinda like her, but it's clear the only parts she cares about are his hands. And her co-worker Polly, she only cares about her neck. Her idiot girlfriend can go to hell, she's just a piece of ass. So it seems the plot is to take body parts. May herself becomes more confident knowing this. Now she's a living version of her doll Susie. May pulls up to Polly's place like, are you plugged in yet? She's a new person. She came for one reason. A reason Polly was too trusting to believe was true. May slices all up into Polly's neck. Her dead body laying on the floor. Polly's girlfriend comes by drunk as hell. She doesn't get to realize that Polly is dead. The one thing May likes about her is her legs. Too bad she won't have a need for them anymore. See all that blood all on the milk? She drags the body, body, she drags the body parts all the way to Adam's house. I guess I didn't mention that today is Halloween because everybody is dressed up. He's busy making a remake of that movie Caligula, but gets goaded into inviting May in by his new girlfriend, the Quaggle Boo. Stop that. These hands are mine now. No, they are mine, Quaggle Boo. When he finally agrees to touch May's face, she stabs and murders the girlfriend before cutting off his hands, first stabbing him in the gut before doing the deed. She then takes all the body parts back to her place and then she starts putting them in place, making new clothes, sewing parts together, and coming up with the name Amy as the name of her creature here. Obviously, Amy is a subset of the letters in her name, May. Amy is alive to her, and they can speak to each other. Amy tells her that it cannot see her. So this brings us nearly full circle. Remember in the beginning when we saw May lost her eye or something? Looks like it was intentional. She actually realistically weighs the option of removing her eye. It was a tough decision for her, and she just gets it over with. After getting through the pain and letting her eye fall out into Amy, she cries, wishing that she could see her now. Guess what? Amy does see her. Her hand slowly moves towards her friend May, caressing her face. The end. Pop. Just like that. You ever seen Pieces? I have a video on it, but that was a special Danganronpa type shit video. The villain in that movie made a corpse just like May, only for it to come alive. I feel like Amy coming alive though was purely in May's head, especially with showing us that point of view of the hand frickling down. <laughs> Man, being lonely is a terrible concoction. Let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moment in that spooky stuff. So you know, the crazy thing is, is I thought May would look like this. I thought she would look like this the entire movie. Another time where movie posters tricked me. First time was with Ichi the Killer, mixing up Kakihara and Ichi. The movie continues that trend of anxiety, lonership, and worry for the future. I thought May had a good start, but it's too bad a couple of heartbreaks literally broke her entire brain. Most disturbed moment is easily when May took her eye out. All the murders and stuff were kind of funny, really. I definitely didn't miss anybody. But May took a long, hard decision-making process to cut her eye out, and then it was painful as hell. Most enjoy moment is probably when May started killing Polly and Adam. She turned into a more confident-sounding person when she had a goal in mind, even if that goal was fundamentally crazy and flawed, and her approach was evil. And that's it. You can find this movie on Tubi. It's literally waiting for you. I enjoyed it a lot and felt like it came out later than it did. Here are two other movies about some crazy woman. Their middle name is Awkward. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Spooky out.